So hello there and welcome to the Bitcoin Takeover podcast. I am Vlad, your Bitcoin influencer's influencer. And today I'm here with Lola, the ladies of Liberty Alliance. And they are a female organization who are very libertarian. They have stickers which say that they enjoy socialism, distancing. <laughs> also, they don't like Marx. True. They have all of these women True. empowerment posters that say that it should be done without governments. And I'm here to ask them what they know about Bitcoin, if they accept donations in Bitcoin, and also what they're into, you know, because they're this organization which is feminist, but not in the sense that they're socialists. They don't want the state to get involved. And I want to find out more. So we have Justina, we have Tanya, Tanya, and Agnieszka. And Agnieszka. Okay. Perfect pronunciation. <laughs> now I'm gonna get behind the camera sure. so you can look at me while we speak. Okay. Right, so what is Lola? Yeah, as you've already mentioned, LOLA stands for Ladies of Liberty Alliance, and it's an organization that supports, educates, and empowers uh, ladies in libertarian, classical, liberal movement. And also acknowledge the fact that we uh, there is not a lot of us. We are growing, of course, and we want to do it, and, but we want to have a repre female representation. Um, the reason why I decided to... Uh, bring Lola to Poland was because I felt alone <laughs> in the movement. Uh, I feel like I worked with two other women, I guess, uh, at the time, three years ago. Uh, and I thought to myself, hey, those ideas are so inspiring. And I feel so in control of my life. I feel so independent. And why other women are not really... Are they not here? Why are they not here? So this is how it started, and that's why I started Lola Poland, actually. So this is our mission, and we're trying to get as many women as we can on board with classical, liberal, libertarian ideas, uh, less state, state interve intervention and uh, empowerment that doesn't come from the state, but it comes from an individual. So what kind of books do you guys read when you establish what kind of feminism you're into? Because you're not a third-wave feminist organization? Well, um, first of all, it's not like all Lolas need to be feminist. I also don't want to mix the terms. Like We're first and foremost individuals, and it's up to every female to decide if they identify as feminist. So that's totally okay. Um, I'm a feminist myself, but usually I like to read other females that uh, weren't actually fighting as calling themselves feminists. They were rather fighting for individual rights. For example, Ayn Rand is a big inspiration for me. I think I read all of her essays when it comes to the virtue of selfishness, the capitalism, the unknown ideal, uh, and also philosophy who needs it. So she is like a female icon for me, for sure, and a great writer uh, and great philosopher. Um, but other than that, maybe girls, you would like to share your books. <laughs> well, uh, hi. That's for great. Okay. Uh, so speaking of like Lola in general, what I think, and uh, you may not, is it working? Okay, so you, I hope you won't believe it, but I'm almost 10 years older than Justyna. <laughs> and I remember the time when in generally like freedom oriented community or libertarian community, we mostly had academic discussions with uh, boys. <laughs> and, but right now the movement is really growing. And when the movement is growing, we also learned that having more uh, diversity in the sense like more di diversity of experience, diversity of lives, of appearances, genders, and etc. help us reach more people. Because I think even 10 years ago, uh, especially in Poland, there was this view that freedom-oriented people are just uh, young boys and there's no one else there. And I am very glad that it's slowly changing. And I also think, of course, it's my impression, it's not based on a study, but now we grow to learn more about marketing and outreach and speaking to different people. And I think the um, awareness that we should make space for others and uh, have more empathy and be welcoming to so many different uh, lifestyles and colors of life. I think that is generally slowly changing in society and it's also slowly changing within this growing movement. And I very much like the idea that, you know what, if 
there is there are people from different backgrounds and different genders that can m do uh, a good job and like have a nice talk at the conference it's good to diversify because then we can reach out to uh, others and they can see that the liberty movement is not just boys in suits as it was uh, 10 years ago and i don't mean it as any kind of forced yeah equality. nothing wrong about boys in suits by the way we, we love, love boys in suits okay them. you look great guys we love them we love them we just want to have more our photos like with more colors and right. it's really nothing like it's uh, i don't mean it in a way of like forced equality nothing like this it's just we are very happy that we have so many different looking people that can provide mm, like good content True. so we show off everyone True. so from my perspective it is also interesting to observe how Polish society and how Polish libertarian and pro-liberty movement is because I'm originally from Ukraine and I moved here due to war circumstances like 10 months ago. And previously I was always working with women in tech, women who were also interested in being engaged in third sector or in politics. And that's why it is quite new to me to be integrated uh, in Polish society with that regard. Uh, and, of course, I support girls with their take on the diversity because it's not only about the gender differences. It's ab about how we can handle the conversation about the ideas that all of us share. Maybe someone can have a different approach, but it is about the communication and the ability to lead the bilateral conversation. And that's how we can communicate the idea that all of us share in a better and more efficient way. What about books? What inspires you? What kind of philosophy do you read when you support this Lola movement? Well, I would say that my bookshelf is quite diverse. So generally, I read books uh, on philosophy, on uh, economics. But uh, in the last time, I think that quite often I'm reading and rereading books of Ayn Rand and uh, her philosophy of objectivism. Right now I'm reading um, The Fountainhead and uh, I agree with many of her takes on life, on uh, the organization and how the society is functioning. And of course uh, it reflects on me and my personal views and I think that it in its turn is also reflecting on which ideas I'm bringing to the community, to Laura and generally to our activism that I do in life. So, uh, I, I'm actually very passionate about individualism in the sense that when you see what's, happen what's happening in society, it's, it's mostly sometimes there are some structures that want to control you and when somebody wants to control you, they do it uh, from some kind of psychological perspective because to control an individual you must somehow manipulate them so I am very much into psychology and the psychology of the crowd and psychology of some hierarchical structures that really want something from you but you don't want anything from them I'm a very much also a thorough kind of person so I guess I would fit in with 19th century American individualists in New England and uh, well that's long gone but that's where my heart is you know the forests of Maine or something uh, uh, my bookshelf is endless so I have Mises there of course like the main Austrian economists I have uh, all the Huxleys and 44 Fahrenheit when it comes to books. Uh, I am very much into researching what totalitarian state does to your head and how to fight against it. So, I mean, I just right now I bought another book on the psychology of crowd and on the art of war, like analyzing Sun Tzu. And so there is a lot on my plate. <laughs> so the common element seems to be Ayn Rand. All of you have read Ayn Rand. Did you go through Atlas Shrugged? I actually have to say that when it comes to Ayn Rand, I have only read her non-fiction. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think I want to read it. I wanted to read it, but then I discovered her essays. And that's why I decided to go for her non-fiction uh, works because they... Um, 
are very short and sweet, but they kind of um, spread the knowledge in a way that is very uh, effective um, and I would say straight to the point. So that really helps me in my work and in my further discussions with other people. So that's probably why. But I'm totally for trying Atlas Track. It's just uh, the length is overwhelming for me right now and the amount of work I have. But I will definitely uh, want to read it in the future. Yeah, so I usually go to Bitcoin conferences and I notice that 99% of participants are men. And we actually joke about it that the only women are either the wife of someone or someone's girlfriend. And it would be very nice if you were there at Bitcoin conferences as Lola, as an organization. And I was curious what you know personally about Bitcoin, what you think about it, and if you accept donations in Bitcoin. Um, okay, so I can only speak for myself, uh, of course, uh, when it comes to, well, your comment about uh, <laughs> uh, girls at the, co during, at the conferences are usually men's wives or girlfriends. That's so funny because it's, <laughs> it was usually like this, but it's slowly changing. And here in weekend of, at Weekend of Capitalism in Poland, it's totally not like that. Of course, we have our boyfriends or girlfriends as well, LGBTQ plus community support always. But uh, it doesn't mean that uh, we are here because of them. So it's slowly changing but if you're saying that is the case at Bitcoin conferences um, well probably we should show up there in it uh, from the Ukrainian perspective as well or sorry I'm contextualized in that regard uh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, just today I had an interesting conversation with the person who is organizing Bitcoin festival in Prague in a couple of months and we were talking about bringing speakers from Ukraine because one of the ideas is to deliver the idea of how Bitcoin could be used in rebuilding Ukraine after the war and how to get it more economical freedom which I think is quite important especially when we are facing a high level of inflation that was even uh, that became even higher due to war reasons. Also, when we are talking about the representation and so-called gender balance at these conferences, I think that women are generally interested in these topics, but the point is that sometimes it is about the ability to apply to some conferences when, when you don't have maybe proper role models, when you don't have a big representation of other women who you can start a small talk, who you can network and who will keep you in the loop. Because quite often when people come to such conferences and they feel themselves as newbies, it's a bit complicated to start the conversation when you're at the different level of understanding. So I think it is necessary to communicate uh, Bitcoin ideas and the ideas of freedom that it is giving uh, to the beginners. Of course, it should not be only limited to women. It can be both to men and women, but uh, probably I can see it as an obstacle of why some, somehow less women apply there. But as you still already told you, it is up to slowly changing and I'm really looking forward uh, to seeing more representations of different NGOs and of course of Laura and probably other female uh, run organizations. So it's funny, it's funny that you mentioned that girls go to Bitcoin conferences or wives or girlfriends because actually my last Bitcoin conference uh, I went as a girlfriend of uh, well, my boyfriend who was presenting a talk about Havala and he actually won the best talk. There, were, there was like Two, the, a part of that conference was Bitcoin conference and another part was some freelance investment thing. Uh, but it's not like I just went as his girlfriend because we are both in the movement. So I knew about it anyway. So it's, it's, it's not quite the way. Uh, actually, what he was talking about, and I find that very interesting, is that in the course of history, people already had peer-to-peer -peer way of transferring money based on trust. So he would talk about how in Arabic countries, for example, when you have the right contacts, you can go to someone in one country, give them some money, and then, because it's a trusted person, that person would uh, send a message to someone in uh, the country where your family lives, and your family would pick up that money from, for example, a brother that runs uh, 
like you would have like two brothers, one runs a shop in the Netherlands, another one in Saudi Arabia, and then somebody goes to that brother in the Netherlands and say, hey, I want to give my family a lot of money, but I want to do it peer to peer, nobody should know about it. So here's the deal. And then you contact, he contacts his brother in Saudi Arabia and the family picks it up. So basically that was the system that used to work uh, and is still working, but it's really based on mutual trust. And what Bitcoin offers, as far as I understand, is something very similar. So you have a peer-to-peer -peer way of like uh, encrypted sending money, sending resources that is not possible to be tracked. And also it's not prone to inflation thanks to the protocol. So it is very important, especially nowadays, we are going to have a very difficult year economically. Uh, we already do. So talking about Bitcoin and introducing that uh, really will help, uh, will help us get out of the financial system that is really messing up with our savings and so on. I don't personally own any Bitcoin because at this point in my life, I'm just a freelance teacher uh, living in my g garden, but it's certainly in the back of my head when I will start to accumulate more assets and uh, we we are rooting for Bitcoin. We think that at some point we shouldn't have this Bitcoin film festivals because we don't have like fiat currency film festivals. We don't have gold film festivals because we already know what to do with that and how it works. So I think we should work towards that place uh, in history when we won't need to have Bitcoin film festivals because people will be like, oh, Bitcoin, yeah, here's my uh, wallet, like, wallet just right? Whatever, yeah. yeah, just click. Right, so most of my audience is male, but I also have some females listening. Maybe that they might be interested in joining Lola. How can they join and how can people donate to the organization? Sure, so the easiest way uh, is to go to ladiesofliberty.org. O -R -G. <laughs> uh, this is our website and this is when you c where you can also donate for Lola. Even small donations count. I would even say that small regular donations are more valuable from uh, in the long run. So uh, I highly recommend supporting Lola. Uh, but what you need to do is simply find your chapter uh, in the on the Lola map, I would say world map. Uh, if it's not there yet uh, you can become a chapter founder and later on chapter leader who will uh, guide other uh, women so this was my case uh, in Poland that I like unfortunately we uh, didn't have any European chapters active European chapters so Poland was actually the first one to kind of uh, kickstart the Europe uh, continent, European continent. Um, but now um, Spain, Madrid and Georgia, Tbilisi and soon hopefully England will also join us here in Europe. So the whole process is very easy. Uh, you leave your contact info uh, through the website and I think in one or two business days, uh, girls from Lola will contact you and they will start the whole uh, setting up, uh, setting up the chapter and knowing, uh, getting to know each other process. So that's very easy. Easy. just need to go to our website I will also add from my perspective so uh, Laura will soon be in Portugal uh, oh, really, really? Uh, oh yeah the table yes. is true Liberty we, will, Con we, will, we will share the table at the Liberty Con in Lisbon so if anyone of your audience of your listeners is interested to come in and maybe talking in more detail discussing the chapter or generally get to know more about initiatives because lots of them are run around the world and you can join and support any that you would like please feel free to do so it will happen in the end of April so just note in your calendar and we will look forward to talking more True. We're usually visible, like more often in Europe uh, at all different conferences here at Weekend of Capitalism, but also as Tanya mentioned, uh, LibertyCon Europe in Portugal, uh, and also we're very visible in Latin America and in the US. Uh, so I guess that anyone from the audience who are listening to your podcast or on YouTube, uh, they should definitely check it out because there are a lot of chapters there. But Europe is slowly catching up. If you can summarize in one phrase, what is Lola about? 
Lola is about individual freedom for women, uh, advocating for women's rights, but especially on individual, uh, focusing on individual rights and educating and empowering them and giving them the representation they need in the, in the movement that still has less women than men. In short. <laughs> for me, Lola is about empowerment, education, and growing your network. So the feminine side of individualism, but not just Perfect. feminine. That's but in one sentence true. Hit, hit Justina up online. She's <laughs> she's the she's the coordinator. Yeah, like from Poland and Europe as well. Thank you very much. I'm gonna put your Twitter or whatever in the video description if you want to follow them and find out more about their organization. So thank you very much and good luck with Lola. Are you concerned that your friends, neighbors, or KYC exchange might know how much Bitcoin you own? It is time to take your financial privacy seriously with Wasabi Wallet, a free and open source wallet solution which makes use of mega coin joins to mix your coins with those of hundreds of other strangers. Thanks to the groundbreaking Wabi Sabi engine, your coins get divided in smaller untraceable units, which grants you great anonymity for both huddling and spending. Download Wasabi Wallet 2.0 today at wasabiwallet.io and take advantage of the mega coin joints. It's free and it's open source, so don't trust Verify. CryptoSteel are innovators in Bitcoin cold storage. Back in 2013, they launched the CryptoSteel cassette, which made it easy to back up your seed phrase, passphrase, or any other form of private key on the sturdy metal which resists water, fire, and earthquakes. Today, CryptoSteel offers the mother load, an all-in-one box which endows you with everything you need to become financially sovereign. Inside of the mother load, you get a crypto steel capsule and a hardware wallet of your choice. All crypto steel products are engineered and manufactured in Poland. Order your crypto steel metal backup system today on cryptosteel.com and use promo code BTCTKVR at checkout for a 10% discount on your first order. Crypto Steel, secure your wallet seed phrase. Are you a writer, photographer, musician, or video creator who's trying to generate some revenue? Bumby is the Bitcoin way to monetize your content. It's more censorship resistant than any other platform of its kind, with a low and flat one-time fee of 10%. Bumby is as easy to use as any social media mobile application. Sign up today at Bumby.com and subscribe for free to the Bitcoin Takeover account to get access to some time-exclusive content. If you are monetizing your creativity, why not get paid in Bitcoin for it? Bumby.com, the Bitcoin way to monetize your content. Shopping with your Bitcoin on the internet is easy. Shopinbit is Europe's biggest Bitcoin store with over 800,000 products, ranging from Bitcoin books, toothpaste, mobile phones, computers, and watches. This month, I bought a Nintendo Game & Watch console with the classic Legend of Zelda, and it arrived in only five working days. And if you can't find what you're looking for, Shopping Bit has got you covered. Their concierge service will get you anything and ship it worldwide. Additionally, they also have a travel hacking service that can get you the best deals on all things travel, flights, hotels, and more. 
for business and for vacations. Bitcoin Takeover listeners get a nice discount, of course. Use code BTCTKVR on your first order for a one-time 5 euro discount. For more details, go to shopinbit.com. Shop in Bit, Europe's biggest Bitcoin store.